for this video, let's go back to the computer model. If we get rid of all the peripheral stuff, the core of this design is radial vaults around a central tower. I need the load from the earth above the vaults to be carried to the footings while allowing this open concept living space in between them, and the solution was to support the vaults with these Euclidean egg-shaped concrete ribs. The inside end of these ribs will sit on the steel compression ring that will help distribute the load to the tower and steel posts and ultimately down into the footings. First, I need to cast these ribs. I also worked out those details in 3D. The original plan was to lay out the wooden forms on a plywood base in the garage, and I'd use shelf brackets and thin plywood to form the, the sides of these forms to hold the concrete. The specific rebar layout was designed by my engineer. Here you can see the concrete volume is about 35 cubic feet, which at about 150 pounds per cubic foot puts the weight of the arch at around 5,000 pounds. Here's the engineer's rebar layout, my pick of the tangential curve sweeps, simplified views for cutting boards to exactly the right length, locating key corner coordinates, how to fit two ribs into the space available, and other details. For practice, I also made a quarter scale model. You can see my kids are thrilled. I also practiced drawing out the full scale arch on my driveway. Eventually, it was time to try the real thing. I laid out these cheap particle board sheets, screwed them together, and began to construct my curves. This is really somewhat of a lost art that graphic designers used to use to create fonts with tangential curves. This was before they had computers. The key to tangency is that when two arcs meet, the perpendicular line must pass through both centers. Then it was time to cut boards to fit the profile of the arch. This involved tracing them on the floor and then cutting them with the bandsaw and sanding them. They're not perfect, but the successive layers should smooth things out. Then I realized that my particle wood base idea is not going to work. Humidity and temperature changes during the day just cause too much work to remove. Before removing them though, I drilled through to mark the key centers of the arcs on the floor. And then I came back and drilled larger, deeper holes that could hold a nail and work as pivot points so I could quickly reform my egg arch shapes without redoing the whole Euclidean process. Then it was time to build up the sides of the forms. I used those shelving brackets as planned, and each is supposed to be able to hold about 250 pounds, so they should be plenty strong enough. I had to back them with some plywood blocks so my other layers could attach to something. I needed to make sure that the forms could be easily taken apart and I didn't want any shifting at the joints, so I used a series of 4 inch offsets with the layers of the thin plywood. It's hard to explain in this short video, but it worked really well. I got quicker and quicker at building these as I went along. I didn't have the wood base anymore, I eventually needed to attach these segments directly to the concrete slab with Tapcon screws. These long outer form portions are convex around the concrete, so I could make them as one large piece and not worry about having any trouble removing them later. This made things less complex for the build. To build up the form walls, I actually used three layers. The first two are very cheap Luan underlayment, which I always thought was a very pretty wood anyway. And then I overlaid these with a very cheap whiteboard to give an even smoother, waterproof final finish. I was not worried about the screw holes because I planned to tape over them. The forms for the spandrels, those cut out holes in the ribs, were a bit trickier. I made the series of parts for them with a very carefully planned process so the spandrels would match. and I nailed them all together with my air gun. I had included a fairly significant draft angle for the spandrel so that I could get them out of the concrete at the end. This made skinning them with that last white layer a bit more difficult and I had to trim to fit. I had a similar problem with the tighter curved portion of the rib. I guess my form walls were not perfectly vertical and I had some trouble with that third layer. After that I used smaller pieces so the angular error didn't add up. Eventually I attached the remaining form pieces to the slab and I caulked all the joints so that the concrete wouldn't leak through. It used up three tubes of silicone.
Then my friend Dan showed up to help out. He took on the job of creating the hangers that we put across the form. These will be used to hang the rebar skeleton so it's positioned in the middle of the concrete. Meanwhile, I got started on the rebar, and you can see the pile of pre-bent stirrups on that pallet in the middle. The majority of the rebar is very thick number 5 rebar. It's not easy to work with, and even more difficult to curve precisely. But Dan came up with this idea of clamping the pieces directly to the hangers and then forming them in place, and it worked pretty well. Then we dropped the long pieces of rebar into the form and threaded on the number 3 rebar stirrups. Tying rebar is not very fun, you need to bend over a lot, and my hands were pretty cut up by the end of the process, but I was glad to be working in during all that rain. As we neared concrete day, another friend, Aaron, came up to help with the second rib. We used the same process to bend the long pieces and were quite a bit more efficient with the second rib. But it still took me about half a day to get all that rebar in and tied. The next day, the concrete trucks arrived, and we poured the basement floor in ICF blocks first. Another video. And then it was time for the ribs. Sherry sprayed everything down with this form release agent so the concrete wouldn't stick to the floor or the forms. Then the concrete pipe was brought in, and things got a little crazy for a while. The pipe was very heavy and difficult to move. The pump truck guy took pity on me, though, and stepped in to show me how it was done. The concrete was poured very quickly, and then it was time to remove the hangers and finish it all off. Sherry actually liked this part of the job. We used buckets of water to clean the concrete off the hangers and tools, and eventually the crew that had been finishing the basement came in and helped with the final edging. Next step, we need to take these forms off the ribs and move the ribs out of the garage so that we can reset the forms and pour four more times. 